Good morning, it's Monday morning in the last week of May. I'm starting this vlog in the car at work to make sure that I actually do start it. This week is obviously the last week of the 1900 to 1950 readathon that's going on during May. And basically, I still have three books that I really want to finish, and all of them are like about 400 or even 400 plus pages, which means I have a lot of reading to do during this week if I actually want to finish all of those books. I know it might not be very realistic, but I've decided to set myself the challenge to try. So Monday to Friday this week, I'm going to see if I can read 100 pages a day, which is a lot, but I think it's also manageable if I just swap my kind of slump time that I usually have when I get home and I just end up like sitting down in front of the computer for about an hour and a half, two hours and not really doing anything. If I swap that for reading, I reckon I can hopefully do it. And then at the weekend, I'm just going to have a bit of a concentrated readathon and see if I can properly finish a couple more books. So I'll see you in the afternoon. Hello, good evening. It's six o'clock on Monday evening and I'm looking a bit more put together than I did at 6.30am this morning when I just rolled out of bed and got into the car and driven to work. I just filmed my Modern Classics tag video which should be up by the time you're watching this and I am now about to get on with my quota of reading for today. So the first book that I'm going to start with is Titus Grain which is the first book in the Gorman Guest trilogy by Mervyn Peake. It's quite long, I think it's like 460 pages so I do have a lot of reading to do but yeah, without further ado I'm going to get on with reading that. Wednesday and I thought it was time for a check-in on how my 100 pages a day challenge is going. So, honestly one of the main problems is that it's quite hard to tell exactly how much is 100 pages because the Kindle version of Gormenghast which I'm reading is one of those ones which only has percentages, it doesn't have page numbers. And to complicate matters further, I have an edition which is the whole of Gormenghast the trilogy rather than just Titus Grown which is the book that I'm reading. So I'm obviously aiming to get like a third of the way through over the course of four days and I am currently halfway through, a third of the way through. I think kind of means I'm on track, although I've probably been reading a bit less than 100 pages a day, but I have been reading a lot, lot, lot more than I would normally be reading in a week. And I've also pushed myself to read when I've been feeling really tired and have actually got a lot of joy out of the time that I spent with the book. Monday night I had a lot of energy, I read a lot, I read till quite late. Then Tuesday night, unsurprising knock-on effect, I was unbelievably tired. I was like so tired I could barely speak the whole evening um, and so I did manage some reading, not that much, but the proof will be in the pudding because I ought to be finishing this book tomorrow. On to the actual book Titus Grown because I realise I haven't talked that much about what it's about and I certainly haven't talked that much about how I'm finding it apart from generally saying that I was enjoying it. I am like absolutely astounded that this is not a more well-known book. I sort of stumbled across it last year but had never heard of it before then and I could not be enjoying it more. I think this might be my first five-star read of the month. So Titus Grown is about this absolutely massive, like entirely a world of itself, ancient castle called Gormenghast and the Grown family who live there as kind of the royalty. And then it's about all the politics that goes on amongst these characters and all of the characters are utterly unique, really idiosyncratic in a very Dickensian way. When I was reading last night I was laughing aloud at the descriptions of some of the characters and at just what happens in the plot and the way that it unfolds. The first quite large chunk of the book was really spent introducing us to an array of characters and the plot at that point was obviously quite slow. Basically a new baby boy, Titus, has been born, he's now the new heir to Gormenghast and the first maybe about 10 chapters or so introduced us to various members of the household. We have this guy called Steer Pike. He starts off as a 17 year old kitchen urchin but absolutely loathes that position and is evidently a massive social climber. He's just described in such an interesting way. Peek says, Steer Pike had an unusual gift. It was to understand a subject without appreciating it. He was not the artist. He was the exact imitation of one. 
So he's a really interesting character. You kind of start off being quite on his side because, you know, he's the underdog, but I can sense that as the story goes on, he will definitely have it in him to be super manipulative. And it'd be really interesting to follow his journey. A lot of the characters have like a twitch or something super idiosyncratic about their speech, which forms an enormous part of them. So there's like a servant called Mr. Flay, who's the ancient servant of the current Earl of Grown. His knee joints click with every step that he takes. And so you get this almost ticking of a clock sound, like following him around as he walks along these miles of ancient corridor. There's the ancient nurse, Nanny Slag, who uses all these hilarious little affectionate phrases when she's talking to the children. What is it then, my caution dear? What is it, my own ugliness? Tell me, tell me at once, tell your old nanny about your little sorrows. And then lastly, there's just like incredible description about the castle itself. It's super gothic. This would be such a nice read for autumn. I just read this description of autumn arriving at Gormangast and it's like one of those perfect literary autumn quotes. Autumn returned to Gormangast like a dark spirit re-entering its stronghold. Its breath could be felt in forgotten corridors. Gormangast had itself become autumn. So basically my update is that this 100 page a day thing is honestly too much and quite tiring and would not at all be sustainable normally. However, is also super fun because I'm so enjoying Gormenghast. Mervyn Peak is one of those incredibly rare authors where he just feels like his writing style couldn't be replicated. It's too uniquely his. Obviously, in a sense, every author, every work of fiction is unique. You know, if I wrote something, nobody else would be able to replicate exactly what I wrote, but I don't think that I would have it in me to create something that has such a clear sense of standalone genius as this does. I am honestly so excited to see how the rest of the book goes, and I'll catch up with you, hopefully, if I succeed, tomorrow with my thoughts on Titus Grown and where I'm gonna go next for my reading. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Sunday, and to my attempt to rescue this as a weekly reading vlog. Given that the end of this week also marks the end of the 1900 to 1950 readathon, I feel like this week is probably quite a good representation of how the readathon has gone for me. In summary of this week, I have not even finished Titus Grown, the first book that I started reading this week. Obviously, I totally failed with my challenge that I set myself of reading 100 pages a day. However, I would say that I really have read a lot more this week than I think I would have done in the week had I not set myself that challenge, and so I don't regret it, and I think I will be able to finish Titus Grown today, which will be a real achievement because it is a long novel. It's also a book that I have really, really enjoyed. This readathon month has been really fun for me. To be honest, it has kind of been exactly as I anticipated it would be, i.e. I set myself expectations that were too high because I knew going into this month that work was going to be really busy. If you don't know, I'm a primary school teacher, and the school that I'm Matt actually is breaking up for summer in about three weeks time. So this last month has been writing reports, it's been like parents evening, parents day type things. It's just been trying to wrap up everything ready for the end of the year. My reading has really gone in peaks and troughs. Basically I've managed to read when I've really pushed myself to read and this channel has been incredibly helpful because I've known that I've had to read and I'm grateful for that. It also hasn't been a super productive reading month, just like this week. It hasn't been a super productive reading week but I've also read a lot more than I would have done had I not set myself the challenge of getting a lot of reading done. My plan for the rest of today is to finish Titus Grown. I am outside, as you can see, which is really lovely. And this is like a positive thing to come from my day of feeling unwell yesterday. I often find on days where I'm completely knocked out and exhausted that I spend a lot of time in my head thinking about ways that I want to improve my life and help myself to have more energy and feel happier, etc, etc. And at the moment, because the end of school is so near, I'm definitely doing that thing in my head. I think of it as like the exam mood, because it's definitely what I always did when I was doing exams at school and university, where you're simultaneously immersed in this really busy and exhausting period of work, but at the same time your mind is like already leaping ahead and fantasizing about what your lifestyle is going to be like when this period of work has finished. And so I've been kind of like thinking out and planning out all of the lovely things that I'm going to be doing with my time when I get to the summer holidays. And one of the things that I was thinking is I need to spend more time out of doors. And as I was kind of thinking, oh, when school finishes, I'll start going outside more. I realized actually like there's nothing stopping me from going outside more now for the next few weeks. So here I am 
in the sunshine, I'm gonna do a bit more reading of Titus Grown until I get too hot. <laughs> feeling well enough to finish my weekly vlog from last week. Unfortunately, after I filmed that little nice happy clip of reading outside on Sunday, probably about half an hour after that, I just got struck down like lightning by a really awful migraine. I spent the rest of Sunday in bed, just about made it into work on Monday, got home, immediately went to bed, and here we are on Tuesday, thankfully feeling better. I did happily manage to finish Titus Grown yesterday, so that was the last novel that I squeezed into the 1900-1950 readathon. It was brilliant. It was my favourite book that I read the whole month by far. Very rich writing, eccentric, utterly unique. It was just hilarious, it was incredibly full of suspense, it was dark, it was gothic, it was varied, and it reminded me why I love trilogies and series so much because I'm just so grateful and excited that there's now another two books that I can go and read. I think there's maybe even another kind of offshoot or unfinished work or something. I know that the Gormenghast trilogy was originally intended to be a long series, but Mervyn Peake only managed to write three full novels within his lifetime, which is such a shame because the first one was phenomenal. And I'm immediately going on to the second novel of the Gormenghast trilogy, which is called Gormenghast. That's the name of the castle, which is very much the setting of the book, and it's one of those settings that is so strong that it basically forms an extra character in the novel. I really like that in writing when you get such a powerful setting that it seeps into all of the meaning and characterization and the soul of the novel basically is the setting. This is very much the case with Gormenghast, so love that, very happy that I finished it. Really enjoyed the 1900-1950 readathon. One final thing to say, I have just reached 500 subscribers on this channel, and honestly that makes me so happy. Thank you to every single one of you who watches my videos, who comments on my videos. This channel brings so much joy into my life. I love talking about books with you all. I hope that my videos bring a little ray of sunlight to your day. Thank you so much for being here and I very much look forward to seeing you in my next video. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.